colour space transforms. This must be the most talked about subject on DaVinci Resolve forums that I've seen for a long time. So in this episode, I'm going to demystify what is a colour space transform, how does it work, is it colour management, is it better than colour management, where does it go in your node tree, all these sort of questions are going to answer in this episode. So this is a really good one for beginners, but if you're intermediate, it might answer some of the questions that you have as to where it goes in your node tree, for example. So let's take a look. So I've got some footage here. Uh, this is some ARRI footage and I've got some red footage here as well. So I'm just going to show you a couple of different uh, color spaces to work with. So my color space transform is here. It's in my effects and I literally drag and drop it onto my clip and nothing happens because I haven't actually set anything yet. And just to show you, we are in color management here. We are in a non color managed environment. We're in DaVinci YRGB. Color managed is the next one down. Okay, so we're in just regular DaVinci YGB. I've got my timeline color space set to DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate, and my output color space is Rec 709 Gamma 2.4 because I'm delivering this for broadcast. This is for HD regular television. If you don't understand that, I've done an episode called Are You Color Space Aware? and it will explain what those settings are doing. So you should check that one out. I'll put a link to that in the description. So here is our color space transform. What is a color space transform? Well, a color space transform is a way of working in different color spaces on a node by node basis. So I want to take this image, which looks very flat from its ARRI color space profile into Rec 709. All right. And to do that, I could use color management. In this case, I'm going to use a color space transform. So there's two things that you need to tell DaVinci Resolve when you're working in color space transforms. And the first one is what's your input? And the second one is what's your output? So our input is ARRI log C. Okay. I know this came from an ARRI camera and it's ARRI log C. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say here in the color space, ARRI wide gamut three and my input gamma here needs to be set to ARRI log C three. And that should put us into a very nice starting position, but this looks terrible. Okay. And the reason for that is our output color space is currently set to use timeline and our timeline color space is DaVinci wide gamut. So it's not Rec 709 gamma 2.4. So it's not going to look nice. The idea here, remember, is to color manage your image. So you've got a really good starting point for your grade. I want to get the image looking as the camera intended it to be. So I'm going to change my output color space as well and get that to be Rec 709. And we're going to choose gamma 2.4, which is a broadcast standard. And now our image looks great. This is ready to grade. All right. So what I'm going to do is grab a still of that. And I'm just very quickly going to prove to you if I reset that node, I'm just going to show you that that's exactly the same as going into color manage here, saying save, and there's the same image. So if I do a split wipe on these, you'll see they're absolutely identical. All right. So the color management in a CST is the same as the color managed. However, I have control of where it will go in the nodes. So the next question is, where does it go in my node tree? Does it go at the beginning? Do you do this to start with? Do you do it at the end? You've probably seen in my programming and my node trees that I work with my CST at the end, but I'm going to show you an extra little tip as well from that. So stick with it. Right. Let's come out of color managed. I'm going to put that back to DaVinci wide gamut. And I'm going to put my output color space to be Rec 709, Gamma 2.4. And to get that CST back on there, I could just drag from here. However, before I do that, I'm going to put three nodes on here. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is show you why I think it should go at the end and not the beginning. All right, so my color space transform should be at the end. So first of all, let's put it at the beginning. All right, so I'm going to drag from here. So I've literally just taken that node and dragged it on the first node here. So there is our setup, ARRI wide gamut to ARRI log C input to Rec 709 gamma 2.4. And these two nodes are empty, so they're effectively doing nothing. So if I go onto my second node here, even though it's labeled node one, it's actually the second node because my path goes from here to here. And what I'm gonna do, if you look at the parade here, we've got a really nice clean image here. This is pretty good. We've, in fact, we could probably not need to do too much to this, but I'm gonna go extreme here and just show you. I'm gonna take my offset wheel and I'm going to push it hard. Okay. And you see when it gets to the top here, it clips. So we'll actually start losing data off the image. This is because at this point here, we've taken a big, large ARRI color space and we've condensed it down into Rec 709. So let me show you on my CIE chart here. The, there's our, that's our color space. That's how large our color space is from the camera. 
and this is rec 709. So it's a much smaller area that we could work it in. And what we're doing on the first node is putting us into that smaller area. So when I start playing with all these tools here, we are hitting the boundaries of rec 709 very quickly. So here you can see my parade, we've now hit the limit. Now, if I undo that, so let's just reset that, okay? And what I'm gonna do now is put this CST at the end instead of at the beginning. So I'm gonna use this trick, I'm just gonna use command and drag, which will literally swap the node order, okay? So it's command and drag. My CST is now on the end, so we're still going ARRI to rec 709, but I'm gonna grade underneath that CST. All right, so in here. So this is why I prefer the CST workflow over the color managed workflow, because in the color managed workflow, it's determining this order for me. Right, I'm gonna do exactly the same step. I'm gonna take my offset and I'm gonna push it hard. And what you see this time is we get a nice roll off, okay? Because we're working in a much larger color space first, and then that is being brought down to Rec 709. Not, we're going to Rec 709 first, and then we're pushing our levels. All right, so it's a much larger working color space that we're in. So that hopefully proves as to why. I know this is extreme, but I'm not losing the detail. The detail is still there. All right, I'm gonna reset that. Now the color space transforms allow us to go from any color space to any color space. So what we could do is work a little bit smarter than this. So what I'm gonna do is take a color space transform. I'm gonna put that in the beginning. I'm gonna say our input color space is ARRI, as we already know and our input gamma is ARRI log C3. But my output color space, instead of sending it to Rec 709 gamma 2.4, what I'm actually gonna do is put this into a larger color space. So I'm gonna put it into DaVinci wide gamut. This is actually a bigger color space than the ARRI color space, but it's a very good intermediate working color space. It's very good if you've got mixed uh, camera formats like we have here, we've got ARRI and RED. So the DaVinci wide gamut is a good intermediate one to use. My output gamma needs to also be set to DaVinci Intermediate. So what we've done here is take our ARRI color space and we've sent it to DaVinci Wide Gamut color space. Now, what we can do at the end is put another color space transform. So this is gonna be our grade. This one on the end, what we're gonna do is take our input color space and it's not gonna be ARRI this time because we've set ARRI to DaVinci here. So it's actually, we need to go from DaVinci color space DaVinci Wide Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate, and now we're gonna send it to Rec 709. So I'm gonna say Output Color Space, Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. Okay, this still looks exactly the same. So if I double click this, which was just our ARRI Log C to Rec 709, and wipe, you see again, they're absolutely identical. Because what we've done is taken ARRI to DaVinci here. We're then gonna do all our color grading in the middle in DaVinci Wide Gamut Color Space. And then we're gonna go from DaVinci Wide Gamut again down to Rec 709. So we've effectively just built a new pipeline. We've got our start and our end. Just to show you, if I push the extreme, we still get that nice roll off. We don't get any clipping occurring. So it's a really good workflow. Okay, so let's take this to the next level. What I wanna do is get a really efficient workflow going on here. We've got our first node here. This is taking us from our camera manufacturer's color space to our chosen working color space. In our case, DaVinci Wide Gamut. This could be ACES if you prefer to work in ACES. There's absolutely no problem with that. As long as your final CST in your program takes you from that same working color space down to Rec 709. This is it's at the final bit that we want to funnel it down to Rec 709 color space. In the middle of that, you've got your grade. So this could be one node, 20 nodes, 30 nodes, doesn't really matter what's going on there. But we're gonna keep that as a blank node for now, and we're gonna make this really efficient. So the thing that's unified between all the clips in our timeline will be our grade. So I'm gonna keep that as a blank for now. And our final CST, okay? We're always gonna go from DaVinci Wide Gamut to Rec 709. So these two things are common. The thing that changes is the first one because this depends on your camera manufacturer or indeed if you're working with archive footage or iPhone, that might just be Rec. 709. Doesn't matter, it still needs setting because we're gonna send it to DaVinci Wide Gamut. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right and click, I'm gonna reset that node and I'm gonna save this as a node tree, okay? So this is gonna be my very basic fixed node tree if you like, okay? So I've got two nodes and I've got that uh, CST on the end taking us from DaVinci Wide Gamut to Rec 709. Now, what I'm gonna do is apply that to all the clips in my timeline. So if I select all my clips and just middle mouse click this one, 
So now you can see that all the clips in my timeline have got exactly the same node structure, but they're all wrong because they're all starting in DaVinci Wide Gamut and going to Rec. 709, whereas these are Arri and Red. So what we can do is use groups, and this is really gonna help us. So I'm gonna take our red footage, I'm gonna highlight it all, I'm gonna right click, and I'm gonna add it into a new group. Let's call this red. And now because these clips are in a group, what we can do is go to our group pre-clip selection, and we can use a color space transform to tell it that these clips are red. So I've only got to do this once and it will apply to the whole group. So we go red wide gamut RGB, and we're gonna go red log 3G10, and we're gonna tell it it's gonna to go to DaVinci wide gamut, because that's our working color space. So I'm just gonna set that up here. And all these clips are now set correctly, because they're in a group. So this is done at group level, and then all you gotta do is go onto your clip level, and we can just start grading away however many nodes you've got there ready to grade, and your final CST is gonna take you from DaVinci Wide Gamut back to 709. So really efficient. So let's just put our ARRI clips in a group and do exactly the same. I'm gonna say add new group, let's call it ARRI. So all our ARRI clips are now in a group, so I'm gonna to go to group pre-clip. Make sure you choose pre-clip and not post-clip because you want to happen this before you start the grade. I'm gonna put my color space transform on and we're gonna tell it it's ARRI Wide Gamut and it's ARRI Log C3. Again, I'm gonna send it to DaVinci Wide Gamut DaVinci Intermediate. And these clips are all now correctly set up, ready to start grading. So if we come out of our group into clip, and we're good to start grading. So you can just fire away here, just to show you that's all nice and smooth, no clipping occurring, and we're good to go. If you wanna see how to do this in a color managed environment, click on this video here. Look after yourselves, and I'll see you in the next episode.